Happy Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Weekend's here. The weather is gorgeous. If you're in Ontario, go <laughs> not. Your umbrellas. Oh, not. Not. How are you, bud? Welcome to HL Puck Prop presented by Sports Interaction Playoff Edition. Everything set. Mm -hmm. Sunday looks great. Like if, if you're like me and you might have a couple drinks Saturday for the Leafs game, 8 o'clock, you get four games. Perfect schedule on Sunday. Yeah. It's the it's the best time of the year for hockey, right? I mean, it's a new season. Uh, it's a new energy, new level of excitement, new adrenaline that these players find to play some of the most entertaining hockey you could see because there's so much on the line. And when you get a slate like on a weekend where almost every time slot is filled with a game, it just makes it more that that much more entertaining. So I'm I'm pumped for it. And it's almost like been one of those seasons where you've just kind of like just been all right. You know, and I guess maybe because we haven't had like too many playoff races in the Western Conference, we're really determined for a long time who is going to be in the playoffs. And in the East, I mean, there was that one spot that was sort of dangling out there between four teams, but it almost seems like all of us could have been ready for the playoffs like three weeks ago. Okay. I No, I got it. And we're going to get right into it as I'm looking at the chat. Hi to everybody there. Tim Powell says he's worried about the boil bet. Guardian struggle against young pitchers. Eh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, did Las Vegas <laughs> tank last night? We'll see. I don't know. I mean, Edmonton didn't suit up anybody. It sure looks like they did, but, I mean, I don't know. How do we prove that they did? Exactly. You, you can't. And we'll get to that. We'll get to the late series, the Monday series. But let's start off. Obviously, Toronto, Boston, that's where we start things off. Uh, like I, I, I got to take Boston with home ice at minus one twenty. I know it could be the square side. I know you mentioned it. Everybody talks about Toronto continuously losing to Boston, but Boston's in their own heads about dropping last year, last falling year. apart. Right? Like right. our narrative is different than their narrative, but their narrative yeah. kind of sucks too. You got Charlie Coyle, Pavel Zaka down the center. It's a lot different than it was before. But for me. There's just too many questions going into this series. This is like the goaltending is an issue. Penalty kill is an issue. We don't even know who the starting lines are going to be. Those are questions maybe you want to have settled going into it. Yeah. What, what's your take on this? And I'll give you another play because I like Marshawn to, to find some points in this series too. Well, my take on is, is that I always – I always be weary of what the public opinion is on certain po positions, certain situations, obviously certain series. And it just feels like everybody you talk to is feeling the same way about the Boston Bruins. And maybe it's because they've earned that position, knowing that how much they've dominated this Maple Leafs team historically, the last six times they've met in the playoffs and we're going counting decades back. We're going back to the 60s. Yeah, it's all men to the playoffs. They're 6-0 and against them. Um, they've won the last seven. But, I mean, how much does that really matter in what is a completely new series with a new different – with a completely new group of players? And I just feel like, you know, everybody is on Boston because they just don't trust – Toronto in a lot of their failures and that's fair I I get it but you know the Boston Bruins haven't been playing great as of late the Boston Bruins since January 1st have least have have less points than the Toronto Maple Leafs since January 1st so Toronto's been the better team and aside from goaltending like where else does Boston really stand out to this Maple Leafs team that's okay, it. They, they, they don't look like a good team on paper. They still yeah, don't, but they, 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 they don't. They and, are. and I think I, I'm going to give a perspective from Toronto's angle here. Almost every year Toronto's entered the playoffs, they've been the team viewed as the favorite. They've been the team starting on home ice. So that already adds an extra amount of pressure. Them starting on the road, them starting as an underdog, maybe they're not feeling the same amount of pressure. And maybe that could bode well for this team because you know at home if they go down one nothing in game one they're not going to feel the sort of pressure in the crowd saying oh boy here we go again when they're on the road that's all eliminated and I think you know you can easily say there's pressure on Toronto side there's just as much even more pressure on Boston side because Boston 
last year had one of the biggest choke jobs in NHL history. Up 3-1 against the team that had the worst record entering the playoffs and lost in Game 7. And I watched that team march to the Stanley Cup Finals. So how much does that still in their head? And how much is that scarring them? So, And I think if you look at this Maple Leafs roster, I think you can say, too, this is the best makeup of a roster that you can envision having playoff success because they got guys that you look at playing playoff hockey. So that's how I would view Toronto in this series. But again, there's so much that you could view Boston in this series. And, and yeah, if you believe Boston's going to win, that's great value you're getting at Boston. I just think you're getting great value at Toronto too. What do you look into Boston 4-0 straight up on the season? Last 4-1 wins, obviously, at home. Jeremy Swayman, 3-0 and with a 1.3 goals against average versus this team. Does that carry over? I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody starts at zero. I mean, Matthew scored 69 goals. Pavel Zaka and Austin Matthews are starting with the same amount of goals. Come play off time. I, I love listening to your show and hearing repeats of things. Like, like <laughs> when you hear other people, like uh, Joe Bowen was on today and he did the man on the moon thing. Right. Right? Yeah. Right. Heard that so it's times, just like, Joe. like, I think everything we think we know going into the playoffs is – we, we could know absolutely nothing yep. going yep. into the playoffs because if we get reminded of one thing every year in hockey, the regular season is completely different from the, from the, from the playoffs. And I think we're going to get reminded of that again this year. Yeah. I can take the Bruins minus 120, home ice goaltend advantage significant, not have to pay too much juice for a home team. Okay. But hold on. You say significant. Okay. What if Ilya Samsonov is the guy that he was, Prior to these two games and over the last two months where he was putting up Vesna type of numbers. And remember, this guy beat Vasilevsky in a playoff round last year. <laughs> Samsonov at his best is nowhere near the goaltending of Boston's either or. Okay. 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 Yeah, you can ride on the, the, the Sammy. Oh, the Sammy look, way. I, I'm not picking a, I, I don't want to pick a, a team in this year's. I'm just saying if I had to pick, yeah, I would probably pick Toronto because – you're getting plus money at it. Sure. Why not? They're evenly matched. They're, I, I mean, being away, there is a point being away to start the series away from Toronto media in Boston probably is, is advantageous for them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Marshawn, to lead the series in scoring, plus 1,200. Give it to me. Yes, please. He's not on a line with pasta, so that's a big one because you want to get away from the pasta points, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you can't take him and pasta if they're playing on the same line. But – in this situation, 33 points over his last 26 playoff games. And the thing is, I think there's a one big blow-up game for, for Toronto in this series where Toronto could still win the series, but a 6-1 Boston win could be in there with Marshawn just doing his thing. So, I yeah, mean, that's fair. Uh, plus 1,200. Dave asks, Dave asks who else is scoring besides Pasta on Boston. It, it's a very good point. Like, is Denton yeah. Heaton on the top line really pushing the needle for Boston? I get it. But these are the same things we said back in October where we didn't give Boston any credit for what they were being. And they, yeah. they still have the same team. They didn't really add much. So you, you have to give it to them. I and think the other thing, too, is – sorry, one second. If you really think Boston didn't purposely th tank in the last two games – well, then you can't be excited about their offense being shut out by Washington and only putting up one goal against Ottawa. Yeah, it's it's not a great right. offensive team. You're right. It really isn't, especially if you can just minimize pass. So that's why I think there's some value in Marshan on the other side. Islanders, Hurricanes. Are we giving the Islanders a shot here? Are we going? It's it's Bar, It's got to be Varlamov. Like, it, it can't mm. be Sorokin. Varlamov for Con Smythe, bud? I, I mean, like, if they're not going to win, but if they're going to win, it's going to be with their goaltending. Yeah. Right. Plus 10,000. <laughs> For Varlamov? Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, just, yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, we got we got a we got a play in there for the the Islanders to win the Stanley That's Cup a, at a plus sixty six hundred. The right? series was split 2-2. Two, two. The Islanders did do something that a lot of people can't do, and that's go into Carolina and win. They won both games in Carolina. Three games in the series were decided by one goal. Carolina is just 
a different beast, though. They have the playoff experience. Freddie Anderson, he's got to hold up, A, because he was amazing down the stretch. The over five and a half total games is minus 140, which is a bit of a bit of a, a bit juicy for me. Series total games at six is plus 235. Is this series just because of the goaltending on one side? If the Islanders can get good goaltending, is this going to be a closer series than people think? Um, no. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm going to say yes because, again, it's the playoffs, right? And I, and I would not discount the Islanders because, yeah, they, they might not look like a really good team, but we have to remember this team has a lot of players – that have played in playoff hockey. Like and to the so, finals, like Western, yeah. like to the Eastern Conference Finals, yeah. And I believe these two teams met last year in the first round. And four Carolina, two. yeah, Carolina, Carolina four squeaked two. it out with Ranta in net. Um, yeah. And so, you know, how much does that play into this matchup too? I mean, anytime I see a plus 300 in an NHL playoffs, why wouldn't you like that value? I, I think Carolina is a great team that has the potential to win the Stanley Cup. And I think they do win this series. But if Varlamov gets hot and Patrick Waugh can somehow motivate to push these Islanders players to another level, they have the talent. They have the same talent level to compete with the Carolina Hurricanes. I just think Carolina oh, Hurricanes are a better team take. because they play a better team structured type of game. So Kyle Paul Mary matches up well versus Andre Svechnikov. Matt Barzell. <laughs> I know, but after the top line, Mark after Nelson, the top line, Nelson's Nelson's a 35 goal scorer, right? Yeah. Do, do, do the Islanders still have the guy you filled? Like is oh, Clutterbuck? Yeah. Is he still there? Yeah. They have that Good whole God. line still there. So Zeke is Clutterbuck and Martin. Wild, wild, so, and, and we know playoffs like the first couple games in every playoff will probably see a lot of scoring, but through through game three, game four, game five, everything gets tighter, right? And, and even even the backup, I mean, Sorokin was wasn't terrible down the stretch, but like if things go south for the Islanders, that momentum swing to bring in Sorokin, who I mean, honestly, he was a top three betting favorite for the or for the Vesna to begin the year, he could win a series too. Yeah. But yeah, six games. I like six games here, plus 235. Carlo thinks there's some value on the Islanders or basically anybody in the playoffs at plus 300. And uh, little Varlamov, Consmite, plus 10,000 in the pocket. <laughs> but like it's, it, yeah, it, it, we're going to get to it the same reason uh, in a couple games. So, don't, let's so get... don't you think, don't you think if you've sprayed one unit on every underdog in every matchup, at the end of the playoffs, you'll be up money? Oh, that's on the spot. One, two, three, uh, eight. No. No? I don't think so. No. Okay. Like, you, you burn eight units right away, and even if you hit Islanders and Capitals, you're still down a unit. Oh, wait, seven, okay. no, seven, five, seven, three. You're still up a, only a single unit hitting the two biggest dogs on that situation. Okay, that's fair. I'm glad you – That's the way, the way you broke it down makes sense. Yeah, and the probability of those both those guys winning obviously very low. Tampa Bay, Florida. I think uh, this is this is F this is FLA. I got them on the spread. Plus you like FLA in this? Yeah, Florida plus one fifteen yeah. to win by two or more. This is the only team that we talked about it all year that played playoff hockey for eighty two games of the year. That third line is an absolute dominant one with uh, Lister Reinen and now Rodriguez uh, and the other the, the other Finn, whoever. Uh, I can't even think of his name. What is it? <laughs> Lister Reinen. Oh, Anton Lundell. Yeah. Like, that's a really great third line. Obviously, there's a ton of talent on the top six, but they have it there. They got great depth at defense. Uh, I believe like even number seven could come in and step into a role, which a lot of teams, Cooler I mean, confidence. especially who's, they got, they got someone on the bench on seven who I forget who it is. Um, Kulikov. Yeah. And there's, I think there's another one too, uh, a Canadian guy, uh, but Tampa Bay, they don't have the depth. Sergeyev still, still out. And I mean, 
Vasilevsky. The injury concerns me. And then the workload again, like right out of the gate coming off an injury, you're like, okay, here's nine of ten games again. Yeah. What do you uh, what what's what's your take on this series? Um it's tough, man. I I, I, I like I like the Islanders. I it's Tampa Bay, you know, Florida. No, no, I know. I was getting to that. I'm just saying. I, <laughs> okay. I, I, I like I like the Islanders in, in the Carolina uh, matchup, even though Carolina can win. The thing that that concerns me in this Florida Tampa series is Florida likes to. It, they're going to initiate trying to bully teams around. They're one of the most penalized teams in the league, and Tampa Bay has the best power play in the league. Like if Tampa Bay is going to win this series, it's going to be because of their special teams. And obviously Vasilevsky. Like if Vasilevsky decides to put the John Wick mask on and just go full out, you know, um, you know, brick wall mode, they could easily win this series. I I do like Florida in this series. I, I I totally agree with everything you said about them. I think they're deep. They're they've been playing playoff hockey since last year. But you know, the question mark is what what type of Bobrovsky you're gonna get. But historically. Tampa's had this team's number in the playoffs. I mean, they've they've won the last two matchups against against them, and they're they're a great dog. Tampa's a great dog to me, especially for how well they've played down the season. Um, so I, I would be, I mean, minus two hundred is a little juicy for me to lay on a Florida series, unless you want to handicap what the series is going to look like. But I see value in 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 Tampa Bay. That defenseman I was talking about was uh, Josh Mahara. That's oh, Mahara. Okay. Yeah, who's not even dressing and probably had reps last year yeah. too. Uh, but looking at it, <clears throat> back to the con Smythe. I mean, Reinhardt's contract year, like, is, <laughs> like if, if you could draw up what a contract year looks like, yeah, and like probably the most impressive contract year, Sam Reinhardt's right up there. I, I obviously think just because of playoff style, I think Kachuk at plus twenty five hundred is the most probable. Of the Florida guys. If you're taking Florida guys, take him at 25 to 1 because of the style that he plays. And if Florida had won the Stanley Cup last year, he probably would have won it. It was between him and Bob, but he was leading in points. Big deal. <clears throat> Sam Reinhardt. <clears throat> Good God. Sam Reinhardt plus 5,000 for Con Smythe. Yeah. What, like when we're looking at goals, when we're looking at big time goals, which I mean, Kachuk was scoring. That's something I want to look at. Barkov is the shortest at 1,800, but Reinhardt could be scoring, like I said, some big goals, which goes a lot longer and a lot further. Uh, what about uh, what about Kucherov, Con Smythe? Ooh, let's find out. Like, it, it, if you like Tampa to make a deep run, like wouldn't he be the guy leading the way, and him and Vasilevsky? But you probably take Kucherov because you'll put up a million points. Plus 3,500. Right. I, I, it's you can go either way. I think every everything we just mentioned has great potential. It just wh- however wh- on whatever side you feel. I I don't think either of us are sitting here saying today this is what's going to happen. We're breaking down, right? Yeah, no. It's I mean when you're looking at those con my thoughts, right? You're like, all right, Tampa Bay plus two thousand outright. Kucherov plus 3,500 Cotton Smythe, <clears throat> maybe going the Con Smythe route is a little more valuable. Like pair that with Hedman and you might be mm. good. I mean, it, like if you want him, Hedman and Vasilevsky, you're probably set for the entirety of Tampa Bay winning the playoffs. No? Probably. Yeah. Braden Point sneaks in there. I mean, Steve Stamkos isn't the guy that he used to be, obviously. But yeah, there's a lot in the chat saying that <clears throat> there's one line. But you bring up the perfect point. Can a scary Tampa Bay power play change the way Florida plays and be less aggressive because they're scared to take penalties and lose the game? Yeah. So if you right. if you don't have the depth, that's how you win. And so that's the path of victory for Tampa Bay. Washington, Rangers. There's plus 350 for you. Guess what? <laughs> this is probably one I'm not going to side on the plus 350 on, though. Unless how you, about, you think otherwise. How about Lindgren for Con Smythe, too? <laughs> a cool plus 30,000. Yeah. But if that's the only way these guys are winning, too. 
Like it's the only it's way. The only, only way. way. And that's like yeah. I'm not expecting them to go far. But if he goes on a heater, you've seen what ha- can happen in the playoffs. Yeah. Goaltending can take you places. Uh, uh one point six one goals against nine thirty seven save in his last six games. If if he flops, the series is done in four or five games, though. Yeah, and look, I I've never viewed Washington as a playoff team all season. I'm I'm actually shocked they got in, considering the teams that they're up against. But you know, you get in for a reason. You get in because you're a good team, and you find ways to win games in different ways. And clearly, that's what Washington did. And riding the co the uh, the coattails of uh, Lindgren down the stretch, where he was literally winning games by himself. I just can't see him doing it four times. I really can't. And, and maybe the only chance for Washington to win here is they find a way to keep it close to the third period every game and then just get a lucky bounce, knowing that Rangers are probably feeling the pressure. But this is one of those series where I don't give any chance for Washington to win. Okay. Rangers haven't been Rangers haven't been great in the playoffs either. Like no, I'm they sure haven't. They, they lost a very young New Jersey Devils team. Yeah, year. who was awful this year. 4-3. Right. Okay, so then you go back to the year before. So they, they bounced in seven last year. The year before that, uh, they had to go seven games as the number two seed in the division versus Pittsburgh. Okay, then they beat Carolina as a dog. Again, seven games. And then they lost mm-hmm. to Tampa Bay in six games. So they're making a lot of work for themselves. Yeah. Uh, if we're looking at niche props here road wins under two and a half minus 110 in the series interesting interesting indeed if this is over in five games that's that's done yeah so it has to go five or less basically is what you're saying or no they could go home 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 and win in seven yeah Yeah. there's a lot of outs for under two and a half road wins Wow, I didn't even know that type of prop existed. Oh, buddy, go digging. There, there's plenty of there's plenty of <laughs> funny ones out there. But it, it's certainly one to target. I think in in these like trying to find value with series that are projected. Yeah, to go instead short. of instead of chasing a series price, right? Find other uh, hmm. you know angles that you could probably make a profit in these uh, in these series. All sure. right, let's switch gears. Good one there. And as we get to as we're betting player props too. Let's also not forget block shots and defenseman shots on net. Things don't get cute in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Shots on net, especially versus goalies who are hot. Colorado, Winnipeg. What do you think about Winnipeg to win the series plus 115? I love it. I don't get this series price. I really don't. Colorado's just such an overrated team. They have such an advantage at home. Sure. But on the road this year, they were – what 1922 straight up with a negative goal differential. This was a team that took advantage of altitude. We talked about it. McKinnon mm-hmm. ran up points at home. It's a different piece when we go to Winnipeg. And Winnipeg looked great last year. Josh Morrissey injury changed Hurt the them. dynamic of yeah. that. They almost went up nothing on Vegas in the first round. And and, and then he the and then he was out and, and that was it. That was the Morrissey deciding factor. And Vegas ran away with the series. I look. I, I always side with teams that are playing their best hockey. Ooh, not Colorado. Going into, the, going into the playoffs. What team is playing better hockey right now than Winnipeg? They've won eight in a row. They've already beaten some of the league's best in this eight-game stretch. They have, you know, championship caliber goaltending in Hellebuck. They probably play the best form of team defense in the National Hockey League. They have great forward depth, one through four. I mean, the names on the bottom six might not be names you recognize, but you look at their production, they've been a big reason why Winnipeg has been able to be where they're at. They they find a way to score timely goals. And you look at their defense too. I mean, there's no bruising guys on that on that blue line, but they got guys that can get the job done. And so I, I love Winnipeg. And, I, and everything about Colorado, yeah. I think this is just the books understanding that they got McKinnon, who's probably going to be the hard trophy. They got Ranton in, they got McCarr, who's one of the best defensemen, but how can you trust their goaltending? Like, I mean, just, I don't get it. Since March 1st, not including last night's game where Edmonton sat basically everybody, Colorado has 
three wins versus playoff teams since March 1st. Yeah. This is a team that's been running up running up scores versus bad teams all year and taking advantage of home. Get and now Winnipeg run and in. get the value on Winnipeg right now. And Winnipeg's at home too. Like that's what I mean. So all right, so and we'll get to that in a second. Jonathan Duran did exit. Okay, that's that's a top. He was playing with McKinnon and Ranton and Nachushkin jumps up to that line. All of a sudden, you're looking at a second line of Arturi Lekkinen, Casey Middlestat, and Zach Parise. That Come could on, be please. easy to match up against at home with last change. Yeah, no, for sure. It absolutely can. And you just look at their bottom six, too. There's, you know, there's a couple of um, you know, holes, I, I would say, in that bottom six. But, you know, Cogliano is always a step. They have two fourth lines line. on their bottom six. Yeah. So I, I, I don't understand the – the line in this series um it's a lot of respect going to colorado being a stanley cup champ two years ago and having those three players but i'm all over winnipeg in this series yeah keep in mind tough to win with poor special teams in the playoffs colorado's penalty kill since march 31st 59 percent oh my goodness <laughs> yeah just oh, yeah just ahead of san jose i believe wow but just That's below tough. anaheim that's 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 that's, that's rough. So uh, this was also a Colorado team that bounced in six games to Seattle last year in the playoffs, as yeah. another huge favorite. So yeah, they're in their own heads too. Uh, I think that I think that series went seven, but yeah, they did get bounced. Down. Yeah, correct four three. Yes, well done. Yeah, <clears throat> total road wins again under two and a half, even money. The advantage of playing in Colorado is massive, and Winnipeg mm. at home matching up against a team without much depth. Gives them another huge advantage. So I, I just think this is home, 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 home. Home team has massive advantage in this game. And, I mean, Winnipeg is, is the favorite. Colorado is minus 130 to win the series and a dog on the road in game one. So talk to me mm. about that. Yeah, I I, it's, I I think Colorado can win a road game, and I think Winnipeg can win a road game. I, don't, I can't see it being more than, than, two. than two. Each side. Even if it goes seven games, I'd like two. Yeah. So that. yeah. Uh, massive advantage there. Let's go. Nashville, Vancouver. Interesting. Yeah. This one is. Uh... I don't get like, I don't know. Like, like the Vancouver, the lack of Vancouver playoff experience in Vancouver is concerning. Demko coming back for two games is concerning. But Nashville, I mean, they've had playoff experience, but it wasn't last year, right? Was the last it was no. year before? Is it, it was before. the year before they went out four no games sorrow. to Colorado. Yeah. I mean, their barns the advantage in that spot, but I don't, I don't. Uh, the value's got to be on the plus one forty, I think. Just on that, I'm not running out to get Vancouver minus one sixty five. No, you're absolutely right. The value is on Nashville. Um, for me, in this series, it's sort of the same thing I I referenced in the in the Toronto Boston. Uh, discussion that we had where everybody you talk to is on Nashville. It's like everybody's forgetting how good Vancouver is with Thatcher Demko in that. Yeah. Like if Thatcher Demko didn't get hurt, we're, we're potentially talking about Vancouver being the president's trophy winners. And I, I think this series is going to be a home ice series because they're both really, really tough buildings to play in, especially with the electricity that both barns provide. Um, I just think that you know people are falling in love with Nashville and the great story they were during that 18 game run that they went on. You know what they've been since that 18 game run? Four and four and six. Like they haven't been great. And so you don't see Sergio. Uh Saros has played a lot of hockey and he's yeah. he was wearing down a bit at the end. And, and, and look, Nashville can easily win this series because they've got game breakers. They've got Saros, they've got Yossi, they've got Forsberg, they've got Ryan O'Reilly, who's a big time playoff performer. But I don't know. I just I, I think Vancouver. I know they're favored in this series, but they're basically the underdog. And everybody you talk to, because everyone's like, and I don't like siding with the the popular public opinion. Because how many times does that you know work out? Where you know everybody you talk to is saying, oh, watch out for Nashville. Nashville could be this year's Florida. Yeah, they can be. But why are we disrespecting Vancouver as much as they? They got Quinn Hughes. Norris Trophy guy, they've got Pedersen, they've got Miller, Besser, who's having a breakout season. Philip Hronick. 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 He's yeah. a stud, too. Like, he's yeah. he's the perfect compliment to use. So, I, 
I think at minus 165, I think maybe you can get it at, at cheaper prices elsewhere as well, too. I think that's value in Vancouver because I think they should be a bigger favorite in this matchup. I'm hearing some tunes. I don't know where they're coming from. You hear that? No, I don't hear anything. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll just ignore it. Fantastic. It's going to be super distracting. <laughs> it's probably one of your pages that you have playing that's playing music in the background. Yeah, it's, it's probably just a dumb ad in my background. All right, but Connor Garland, we keep talking about him. Well, guess what? He leads the team in goals with nine since March 1st. That's a 20-game stretch. Still PP1, still second line. Leads the team in shots on goal per 60 and shot attempts per 60. Beating Forsberg is tough, but to lead the series in goals, Connor Garland, wow. that's sports interaction plus 1300. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the so house you're, rules on the dead heat if it's a tie. You're measuring him versus Forsberg versus maybe Nyquist, Pedersen, no, Miller, Pedersen won't be there. Hughes. No, it's great value for a guy that's. Literally been elevated in the lineup, or last and that's and that's where that's where the value is, right? Plus twenty five thousand for Con Smythe. Like, if you want to get Vancouver, make sure to get a piece of Connor Garland on your Con Smythe at <laughs> plus twenty five thousand. Because why not? If if it, if important goals mean a lot, <clears throat> that's the way to go. Going to be tough to beat out <clears throat> Quinn Hughes, who continues to point constantly, or Demko if he steals a series. But plus plus twenty five thousand <clears throat> is big. All right, let's get to the last two here, the ones that were settled. Uh, yesterday. Yeah. The Monday games, Vegas, Dallas. I know you're a Vegas guy. I know there's experience hit that like button. As producer Mick says, he's got to jump off and get ready for, uh, before you bet that comes on at 12 o'clock with Joe Osborne as it goes there. But Dallas at minus minus one thirty, bud. As I'm going to pop it up. Cause I think I've lost them. Dallas at minus one thirty. I know you like Vegas and I know this is going to be a push for you. Minus one thirty, like yeah, I, I don't see value in betting Vegas here. No, I want a, yeah. I want a longer price for sure. Yeah, you should be getting a bigger price for them being the eighth seed. I think the value here is betting Dallas because they're the top team, and you have to think that the loss of last year's playoff series is going to motivate them even more. Um, the the chance to beat the defending Stanley Cup champs, and like we like. Vegas could easily make another run for the playoffs. I wouldn't put that past them, but how do we know how all these pieces are going to fit together that have been out? You know, yeah. Stone's, Stone's expected to be back for game one. You know, they've been dealing with some injuries on the defense, and as far as I know, all those guys are supposed to be back in game one. It, can Vegas be the team that turns on the switch? Yes, I, I give them that credit. I think they can. But Aiden Hill... Goaltending scares me. I mean, he had a great run last year, but he had a great start to this season, but he's been touch and go for most of the season too. I just think Dallas's team is better. This Dallas team is better prepared to beat a Vegas team this year than it was last year. I mean, the, you bring in Tanev, um, you know, Wyatt Johnson, Logan Stankoven have found – well, Johnson's been yeah, your third. Your player. third line has two elite rookies and a yeah. former MVP. Yeah, and Jamie so, Ben and Matthew Shane's there now. So, I I think the value in this series is taking Dallas. I really do. Yeah. Um, versus Vegas because Vegas could win this series, but plus one ten, like it's not worth it to me. No, I I think there's a great price if Jake Ottinger can be Jake Ottinger and not yeah. give up a ton of goals. Like you see he, the save he made in overtime the other day no. that would have made us click or catch the uh, the St. Louis plus one seventy five. No, you didn't see the save. No, I don't. I, I was, lost. I don't dig into my losses. So okay, I it it was one one in overtime. Fuck. Robert Thomas had a completely empty net because. It was three on three, and he saw he was on the wide side. He shot in the empty net, and Ottinger basically put his stick out. He's like, "Oh, I'm beat." It hit his stick and didn't go in. What if I told you I put that with Arizona before I went to bed? I'm like, yeah, "I'll just throw them together here." It would have won oh, me seven. God, I, I would have won me seven hundred bucks. I send you this save. You're gonna go. Nuts. I, have, I'll, I I got it. I'm bringing it up now. Do you watch me break my heart? That save on Rob Thomas. Yeah, but like I said, 
Hurdle for shots, Parker Smith says, there's a lot of moving pieces within that Vegas offense that is going to have to come together. And jumping into a playoff game versus the deepest team in hockey up front in net, although not deep in net because Scott Wedgwood's not good. And on defense, that's Dallas. Uh, there's a reason why they are. To get Dallas in this spot, minus 130, incredible. And, and I'm wondering, like, do you, if you're a young team, can you be dumb enough to win the playoff because you don't know what it is? You know, you know what not. I mean in that sentence. I'm like, I'm not yeah. shitting on young people, but like, yeah. you gotta see teams go through lumps, and Dallas has done that. Yeah, I, I agree, and I think, you know, the West is such a hard conference to predict, but I, you could easily say the winner of this could probably march to the to the Stanley Cup final. No. I mean, I know you got to play the Jets and, and Colorado off this, but I, I'm curious as to why Vegas felt like losing last night was a good idea to come into this into this bracket versus no staying in the Pacific. No, thanks. Right? I want nothing to do with Dallas. When no. Ottinger's on, I want nothing to do with Dallas. Yeah. <sighs> last one. Doing good. Kings, Oilers, round three. <laughs> The, the, the Kings haven't done it. Like they Does, does a result out. change in round three? I don't see it changing. I know, right? Like it's it's basically the same teams too, right? Like yeah. it's it's still it's still the uh Kopitar, Philip Deneau down the middle for the Kings. They haven't changed. I, I think the Kings are, are worse now at net. I, I just think that the the Edmonton Oilers woke up with the biggest Christmas gift. This morning, because with Vegas and that goes losing, to show, they dress nobody, and like shit yeah. happens, right? Like, yeah, they 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 caught a break without getting Vegas. Now they get LA, a team that they're very comfortable playing, very um, you know confident, knowing that they beat them in the past. And you know, you look at their goaltending and stuff too. I just. And then after that, you play the winner of Vancouver and Nashville, like, you know, versus having a first round playoff matchup against the Vegas team who you haven't beat. Yeah. Right. So I, I, the only thing that would go against the Edmonton Oilers right now is if they, if the pressures of winning this series and knowing what they have ahead of them gets to them. That their and path is easy, and it's like this is yeah. our best chance. Well, I'll just remember they started the season by having McDavid and Drysaddle say it's cup or bust. Yeah, right. That's that's the pressure they're living with right now. Stuart Skinner so. could fall on his face too, right? Like, <laughs> like, yeah, he's got reps now, but like he's still not the goalie where you're like, oh, he's yeah. not, he's not a Saros, he's not Nottinger, he's not a Shesterkin. Like he's up, he's up there in the Sammy category when I'm looking at goalies and I'm tearing them up. In this, mm. like I, I might rather. Uh, no, I get the price on Edmonton is hefty. It's what minus one eighty five. Is it one? Yeah, minus two twenty. Like it's hefty, but I mean, I just don't know how Edmonton beats him with that goaltending. No, nope, you're right. Seeing some movement on that Boston line, going from minus one twenty to minus one thirty. Ah, oh, that's. No, that's the game line. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Game one. Game one, money line, Boston, minus 130. Series price, minus 120. Uh, so, yeah, there's the eight games. It, it really is tough just to be like, this team's winning this at this, and there's a ton of yeah. value on this. But give Washington and maybe the Islanders a little more credit than the plus 350, plus 325, because they both have situations where their goaltenders can win them games, and they both have goaltenders coming into playoffs that can do that. And that's the only way you can beat those teams. You're not gonna out. You're not gonna out punch Carolina. Probably not gonna out punch New York. They're gonna need some big games from those and those guys. That's why we're getting those silly odds for Varlamov. What was Varlamov? What plus fifty thousand or something? Something like that. Hundred thousand, I think. Yeah, hundred thousand and Lindgren for big plus money too. So, uh, a lot to look forward to coming Buckle up. Buckle up, man. Should be fun. Yeah, all my plays, all my my leans and plays and my looks uh, are on my X feed. Everything there except for the two games that were established today. But looking forward to it. We'll be doing our regular Wednesday, Thursday, Friday playoff run as it goes until the games kind of dissipate. And then we'll kind of figure it out from there. But next week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday releases again starting at 10 a.m. 
weekend pro weekend projection. Anything big coming out of the weekend? Big surprise. What's Carlos' hot take before we duck out? Heading into uh, when I see you next Wednesday. Like for hockey? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's no big surprise. It's game one. Bet the underdogs in game one. That's what I There, there he goes. Bet the underdogs. Yes. All right. The path to Con Smythe victory for Semyon Varmov <laughs> starts Saturday at 5 we're, o'clock. Oh, we're big Isles fans as we take it. Like we might plus be. 6,600. Yeah, Andy Francis this. is absolutely going to kill us. But yeah, <laughs> appreciate everybody there in the chat. I'll be joining Andy pretty soon. Uh, talking some hockey. Let's leave it at that. I'm Josh Ingles. He's Carlo Koliak. Well, this is NHL Puck Prop presented by Sports Interaction. Playoffs, bud. Let's go. Yeah. Well, thanks for sticking with us, folks. The chat was on fire today. It was a 40-minute segment, but a lot to break down, and we had fun doing it. So good luck with your bets this weekend. All right, cheers.